welcome everybody to our meeting. I declare a quorum present. I call the meeting to order. I want to give notice that the planning board, that planning board meetings are broadcast and digitally recorded. Um, I don't know whether we have a sign-in sheet tonight and whether I need Well, if you, we, we begin our meetings with a public comment session. So, and I usually ask people to sign in. If you didn't get a chance to sign in, I guess you could sign in later. But if you, there is. If you want to speak at the public comment session, uh, just just stand up and identify yourself, give your name and address, make your comments to the full board, and we do have a big agenda and a limited battery life on our camera, so try to be brief. And we may not respond immediately, but anything the public says is important to us, and if we don't respond here and now, and it requires a response, we will respond. Um, so, anybody wishing to speak during the public comment period? Okay, if we don't have anyone wishing to speak right now, we'll move on to the uh, item four. Item three on the agenda is minute approval, and they're not, they weren't finished in time. So, the first action item um, is the Tasto decision review and approval. So, um, where this matter stands is that we voted two weeks ago to approve the application for a permit for the reclamation of the former clay pit at 26 Worcester Road. Using the process presented by Mr. Calvi from Casella, who's here tonight, and subject to terms and conditions discussed, and to our consultant, Mr. Murray, preparing a draft decision for us, which he has and which we have tonight, and which there are copies available. Right, Christina? Yes, if so there, if you want a copy of what was of the draft decision. Draft decision. And yeah, anyone draft else? Copy. Yeah. There you are. Okay. Can you find the seat? Yeah. Really, if there's no place to perch, Christina, people can just sit at the table mm -hmm. tonight. Okay, so I want to stress that our action tonight is really an administrative action. The decision to issue the permit was made at the last meeting. Um, so questions and comments that we discuss tonight should relate specifically to the draft decision. Our goal tonight is to correct any errors, omissions, clarify points of confusion, and then sign the decision so the permit can issue. The decision must be, after we sign it, filed with the town clerk within five days, and there's a 20-day appeal period. It also must be reported at the Registry of Deeds before work can commence. Finally, our bylaws also say that the planning board consultants, uh, consultant must be paid for his work done in connection with issuing the permit, and financial arrangements must be made for supervision of the project by the planning board going forward. So I've asked Mr. Murray to address those issues this evening. So, uh, Mr. Murray, I would like to ask you to go over any new issues, which are issues raised after our last meeting, resulting from your preparing the draft or from comments solicited uh, in its circulation. And I would say to the board, the, a draft, the draft that you have was circulated to the board, or was it a different draft? Yes. This, oh, is, no. this, this is the latest this is the final draft. as of noonish today. Yeah. Okay, but there were, that did incorporate some changes and comments. The way it worked yes. is he prepared his draft, he circulated it to the board members and to Mr. Talby. We are um, not allowed, we could, we could respond with comments back to Mr. Murray, but the open meeting laws prohibit us from discussing the matter yeah. in, among ourselves in private. So what I want you what I want you to do is, Mr. Murray, is to tell us um, what changes were made and um, questions raised. And I'm thinking specifically of the ones I know about from reading, the, which are traffic, the jump removal, yep. and fee issues. But there may be other issues. So do you want to walk us through that? <laughs> um. I do want to bring to the board's attention, I printed it out and copies are here, that 
the board and I received from Clark James from Casella Organics an email at 3.30 this afternoon. Can I get a coffee? Yeah, there you go. Thanks. And I it was just too late in the day and I had already, had already sent this draft out. Uh, so I did not address them and quite frankly it's not my place to address them. Those are decisions to be made by the board. So I don't know if you want to take those up, but on the draft, the changes, most of the changes were clerical, uh, typographicals. One of the issues that we knew was going to come up was number, I didn't find this one, uh, number 18, prior to the commencement of any site work, the applicant owner shall provide information to the board and police chief regarding the number of construction and delivery vehicles, likely, likely construction routes and timelines for construction. The police department reserves the right to require a police detail paid at the expense of the applicant owner if it is determined that construction traffic is impacting local roadways. That was a request by a board member after a conversation, mm -hmm. Craig, after a conversation with the police chief. Um, Mr. Talvey and I spoke earlier today, so I called the police department earlier today. I actually sent them an email saying, if the traffic is as light as they anticipate it, are you likely to require a police detail? Uh, the chief is away. I don't know if he's on vacation or not. But um, Sergeant Kucher. Kucher, thank you. He's right, he's the acting chief. And he said, given the traffic, it is extremely unlikely that they would have four to six trucks in and out a day. It is extremely unlikely because of the fact that the board is already restricting the traffic to standard business hours, not including weekends except on exceptional cases. Uh, dusk is the shutdown, so they won't be going in and out at night. Uh, we've also included in the, the description that, and, and they pointed out themselves, that that is an extremely street, steep driveway, and they're not gonna be driving on the driveway when it's got ice or any impediment, and that's, part of the conditions. So with all those things in mind, um, his suggestion was, my suggestion was, well, let's do the first day with a detail. And he said, no, let's do it the other way. Uh, let's not do a detail. And if we determine it's a problem, then we will require a detail. Uh, after all that conversation, uh, I reviewed our town bylaws. We don't need to put this in here because the police chief on his own action and his own motion, if he determines it to be a hazard, can require them to put a detail. And in addition, it is part of the state highway layout. They can always, our police can always call the state police and they can require a detail. So it is, um, I, do, I don't think that there's a problem here. I think this reserves the right of the town and shows that the planning board is being proactive and protective but you're not, you're not establishing any condition that the police chief doesn't already have. Okay. So that was number 18. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we added <clears throat> number 20, where is it? I thought it was 28. We added 28, page 8 of 10. So this is really the only substantive change that was made from last week. And all it says, which the applicant has already said, uh, and the DP has been informed, that all, all the organic product is coming from the Irving paper mill. Nothing's coming from New Hampshire. And so we, we assert that as a, an affirmative condition, and that if they change that, there is no prohibition per se on changing it. But if you do change it, uh, you, the planning board needs to be notified and they need to make a determination whether it's significant or not. <coughs> kind of a quick question. It's, it's not just a source, but it's potentially even partial source, right? As it's indicated on the second page, it says the modification of the source may be determined. So not the source in its entirety, but even a partial source. So if there is a combine, if there's a combination of a, a material that comes out, not out of Irving, that would also be considered to be a modification. I just want to make sure that we are understanding that it's not the source in its entirety, but even an addition 
or, or, or partial addition or partial modification of the source. So if 100% is coming from Irving, you're fine. But if, say, for example, anything less than 100% comes in from Irving, that would be considered a modification. It, it says all organic fill materials come from Irving. I understand, I understand that, but it says a modification of the source, as it's stated on the second page. And the way I read that is, is a modification of the source would mean that, a modification meaning that if they go out, and the way I would read this here is, is that they, they decide to go out and get similar material or other material from a different source in its entirety. That's how I read it. Uh, and I would like to indicate that my interpretation would be is that any change, any modification, any modification, I just have a point of question, is that the sample that was sent out for testing, that we sent out to meet our bylaw, yeah. that was specific to this, to the Irving product, right? So? Uh, no. It was the, the, not. The, okay. PH, the PhD um, reviewed all of the product <coughs> materials Western. and issued an opinion on both Nashua and Irving, that both are Essentially benign. And, okay, but they don't That's what the, LS, the LSP okay. from SWCA said. Okay, just you, Casella Organics actually affirmatively made the statement to you, the planning board, that only Irving, they've taken Nashua? Yes. Nashua yeah. out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do have to bring in fertilizer. Is that going to be under this? That's too? not an organic fill material. Okay, that's, okay. Right. That, that was my question. Okay. There's no prohibition. The natural is no longer in our matter fact, matter of fact, there, there is a requirement for fertilizer meeting 330 CMR, and I don't non-agricultural application of fertilizer, but 330 CMR is the uh, phosphorus bylaw. I don't know if you know of it, mm -hmm. but soils are supposed to be tested, and you're only supposed to fertilize in accordance with the requirements of the testing. So that's all we're looking for. So that's that is number 36. Which says, yeah, for, we affirmatively state that fertilizer needs to be used. Mm -hmm. Irving's the only material. There's nothing else in our system that comes to us in that. Good, then. It's a non issue, right? Okay. Um, other than that, there were typos, hours of operation, which I cleaned up, uh, and s some minor name changes. What my name on? What's yeah. mine, too? <laughs> there, I know there was a. There was a Took it from the website. <laughs> Well, it's it's right some places, not others, but that's okay. <laughs> we can okay. modify it. There was an issue about junk removal that was raised. Did that wind up being in here removal? or not? No. Junk cars. Oh, junk, junk cars. Yes, this last item. Is that omitted or is it in here? 39, page 39. 9 to 10. Okay. Right. You want to just run through that because sure. it wasn't covered in our last Right, and this is, this is a discretionary item. I still have editor's note in here, which I guess I need to take out since we're making changes. Um, is the town of Hubbardston has a general bylaw I cited here that unless you're a licensed junk dealer, a junkyard, you're not allowed to have more than one unregistered motor vehicle on the property, not in a garage or, or otherwise contained. And when we did the site walk, I think we saw more than one of those vehicles up there. A couple of disappeared. I didn't hear that one. A couple of guns. A couple of them. Oh. All right. The other two are going to be gone within a few more days. Okay, so this isn't a problem for you. No. And it wouldn't no. apply to farm equipment, it's no. vehicles. Okay, no, no. all right, fine. That issue is resolved then. Unless, okay. I mean, my feeling is it is a bylaw, and um, as we're issuing permits, we should try to, you know, help the town and make, them, make applicants comply with as many as that are reasonable and apply. So okay. I, did, I did do a graphic for site distance and. Oh, On the traffic yeah, issue. Yeah. Yes. Go through it. This was a subject of a lot of discussion, but not between us. Just between <laughs> individuals and Bill. Right. I mean, yeah. So the question is, the driveway is located here. The problem is you've got a very steep grade going in. The driveway itself is not in good condition. And the concern of a member of the board, and even my concern, is a truck coming in is probably going to have to turn. He's going to have to slow down pretty good because it's a very big upgrade. He's probably going to have to cross the double yellow line to make that turn because the driveway is not overly wide. No, but I don't. No, no, I mm. take you back there. That driveway is designed for trailing up the trucks. Okay. Okay, that's good. 
So, so it can turn south or north, either direction. Yeah. It doesn't matter. In any case, they have more than adequate. I mean, it's on a straightaway. It's a newly repaved road. The sight distances are way more than what they need. Uh, I think the so speed limit's 35, isn't it? No. Half, halfway down the hill. Yeah. You get out of the village. It's 15 it's where they already go by there. But you guys are going to be coming down the hill and slowing down, not speeding up. Yeah, the trucks will be coming from the north. Yeah. So you become in this direction. An easy and, terrain. Yeah. And we're requiring a stop sign at the intersection to be put just for safety's sake. So from an engineering point of view, we don't see it as an issue. We've spoken to the police department. They don't see access into the site as an issue. Um, but. The sergeant did say that he didn't see a problem with the condition, but they would only exercise it if, in their discretion, it became a problem. Okay. May I say something? You may. Go Back ahead. when we were in operation, we had a, a business day. We had 112 loaded trucks leave that property. And, and we were in business for 10, 12 years. We never had one incident down there. I remember. And, and we've had over 60,000 loads come in and out of that property. And we never had a problem with the stop sign at the bottom. That's okay. No, I, I appreciate what, that. I don't know what more I can say. I, mean, I think. I mean, I think 112 that trucks a day kind of proves it that it's a safe driveway to come down. And the trucks were loaded coming down. These trucks are going to be empty. I mean, if they can't stop, then they shouldn't be on the road. Right, they're going to be loaded going up and empty coming down. Right. All right. All right. All right. We, we appreciate your comments. Um, shall we move? Shall, you want to discuss the fee issues here? Um, sure. Because it is a requirement that we pay him for his work done, and it's before the permit can issue, and that we make arrangements for the supervised visits. And so I asked him to come up with estimates for what what this would so uh, cost there are three proposals there uh, one is the the old letterhead that I have and I have copies of the invoice so I just made them up today these are fresh off the press <laughs> yes they are. I'm willing to share with John if you want to give the, I don't know how many copies you have I have nine oh, okay <laughs> give our petitioners one yeah. so that was my original proposal was I think seven hundred sixty dollars and that was for the review of the application it actually took me twenty eight hundred dollars but my proposal said it was seven hundred sixty dollars um, then there's a second proposal that I issued and I mentioned it at the last meeting for twelve hundred dollars to for this meeting and to develop the draft permit so that's what this invoice is for you get to. And then I gave you a third proposal for construction support. And we estimated that at $3,300. So the one thing that I do say in the proposal, services not provided are not built. So if we anticipate that there's a pre-construction meeting standing out there, just everybody talking to make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, torrential downpours, I almost always go to a site and inspect the site after a torrential downpour. That's part of the federal standards, uh, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. And then there are two site walks and coordination for closeout, and then another one for affirmative statement that the bond should be released. Okay. And that's a proposal only. Uh, I haven't done any of that work, and that's for thirty-three hundred dollars. Now, if you know, depending upon the timeline of this project, if these guys are are in and out in two months, it it won't be that much. I just assume for a four-month window, and then a follow-up a year later, because our regulations state that the bond isn't released until after a year expires after stabilization. Okay. Are there other issues that anybody on the board uh, wishes to ask Bill at this point? And then I'm going to yes, let Mr. Talbot speak and address his his concerns. I'm on site. Is that yeah. okay, Mr. Talbot? You want to walk us through your comments and let us know? 
says the intent is to avoid I don't see anything that prohibits you from trucking in the machinery and not trucking in the product yeah it just says avoiding the trucks on the slippery slopes maybe we, we don't want to say the, we don't want the slippery slope correct right. yeah I, I mean I don't want to see right. a d8 come down that hill with a, a, a well, half inch of we, snow on the ground. We've, we've worked plenty, <laughs> I know, we work plenty of the winter time. We usually set up in a town, we hire the local guy to salt and sand for yeah. us. That's right. standard procedure. Um, but we, How that we, place is not going to work very well in October and November after the rain. It just, it's not going to dry out now. So we really need the heat of the summer. Okay. And that's Eric's concern contracted. Well, there is work that we could do to um, uh, prep the site for paper um, during the, the winter months if the winter was reasonable to do so. Um, it's frozen solid, forget it. If it's not, it's kind of a weather issue. But there is work that we could do in here to prep the site for, for paper in the spring and summer. That would involve being in there doing the work or doing some work, uh, not necessarily spurting. So I don't read 20, I personally don't read 21 prohibits that. Correct. Okay. So are your thoughts are you're not going to be able to bring them this, this fall and, and do this now because of the weather and the time? Well, the timeline, we, we you know, before this all happened, we were planning on being here right. in July. Yeah. And um, now here we are at the end of August. and. We yeah. still have, you know, some time to go here before we get approval and the... Uh, Only if you guys <laughs> give us more conditions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to add a clarification sentence if you... We're, we're necessary modifying it anyway, so... That, that would say, this won't preclude... Uh, site prep. Site preparation and associated vehicles. I mean, if we can't find suitable material uh, gravel on site, we might have to bring some into the road to go down into the pit. So there would be material coming in, it just wouldn't be paper. But that could be stump grinding instead. It could be an organic material. So that's stump, right. stump grindings are a great temporary road for the right. big trucks. They float really nice, shed water, mm -hmm. and then we break down into the Biomass. Right. Um, well, yeah, as it gets wetter here, we're just concerned that the, okay. the trails with 30 tons on them might go in, but not, not come off so well. But if you were to have a prolonged Indian summer, maybe we change her. Well, I think there's there some things that might be able to be done, and sometimes you just can't do it. Well, what can we do with this process we're talking about right now? How can we speed this up a lot? Is there anything we can do to? 
How much longer is this process going to take? Well, we're doing, we're doing now. No, I mean, what, an hour in. I don't know. This is my first time, folks. I've never done this. So I don't know. We can. Um, I think just expedite what we're doing. They can't do it without a part decision. Right, right. So as soon as that decision is signed, it can be delivered to the clerk. We can make they these. have five days. Your computer is there, all right? I can go to the other room and type this up if we need to. Yeah, we can make, I have my computer. We can make these changes right now. And print it. And print it. Print yep. fresh copy. I don't have a problem with that if everybody else is okay yep. with I that. Just, I just got sure that's, you have a whole page of comments here, which I haven't really read. Maybe, yeah, and now I've lost it. Where is it? Here's a copy right now. What, can you cut, can you walk us through your other concerns? They're addressed here. You can see what, well, how do you feel about the police situation then? Uh, address that out yeah. immediately. Yeah. yeah. At first was kind of a little bit, okay, now. I think it's been kind of covered. I don't think you really have to worry about it. At that. first, it was a little bit. It took my breath away from it. Like, oh my God, here we go. We don't need this situation. We, uh, we need, it was very helpful to know four trucks a day, the details which we didn't have the last meeting. I mean, it was board members. So, so when I explained it to the police, yeah. I said four to six. Yeah, good because four the paper six. mill is a, is a, there's a lot of machinery. Sometimes there's only two trucks one day, and then yeah. those other two or three are going to come the next day. So it's an average of four, but they have, the trucks break down. There's, we need a right. tiny bit of flexibility built in that someone's not there with a counter saying, aha, there's four, now there's five, and we have a big problem. Yes, we haven't put a limitation in here. That's just a little bit of flexibility for weather conditions, um, mechanical issues. Um, well, the sense like that is that the chief says, or the sergeant, acting chief, says that it's not an issue until it becomes an issue. Right, mm -hmm. right which is and, good. And if it becomes an issue, they have independent authority to put it on you anyway. Well, Where they call the state police and they put it on you. Yeah, I mean, it is a state road, so really they'd be jumping in there if they need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the planning board, it, it just is a marker notifying you of, uh, and notifying the public that they're trying to take care of the concerns that have been uh, raised by the public. So if we, we address the concerns in your letter, Sufficiently? Well, I think we, get, we had an issue with the number of inspections that would be required. Where okay. this you really explain? isn't, well, where this isn't actually an earth removal permit where we're storing the site, mm -hmm. it's not an ongoing sand and gravel excavation operation where you would typically be doing inspections over time to assure that you don't have more than two acres open at any given time, the slopes aren't exceeding the standard. We're in there doing the restoration to close the site down. We expect to be in and out of there fairly quickly. I don't know what's our timeline for this. You know, mm -hmm. The acreage, once we get gone, probably. It's only nine, months. it's barely nine yeah. acres. Before. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty small scale right. site for us. So it, it seemed to me to be overkill to have a number of inspections. I can understand, you know, we're in the process of restoring the site to prevent erosion. I can understand if you want to have somebody come in after a heavy rainfall event to ensure that conditions haven't deteriorated. But in essence, we're bringing in materials to improve the quality of the site and improve protection of surface water and groundwater. So anything that we're doing should result in a risk of and that benefit to the town and the landowner. So, Again, I'm willing to work with you on some inspections, but it seemed a little bit some the way it was written in the permit. And it seemed much more appropriate for a sand and gravel excavation permit. Does the town inspect the gravel pits in town that are in violation of the reclamation orders? We, we do not have other reclamation orders pending. That's one reason this has been a trial for us. Because we passed a new bylaw a few years ago to address this issue, and nobody's gone through it. Unfortunate uh, luck of the first draw. What? I would say this though with inspections, um, there are things that we are concerned about. We had, and you weren't here the last time, but we have people passionately speak about odors. So one of our conditions is 
that your product be mixed with the soil within the ELO to, to be there more than 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So there are, there, are, there are things also that might require inspection that wouldn't in an ordinary gravel pit, you know what I mean? So, but I'm going to let Bill answer that question. What? Inspections. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention. I was not. I'm editing. Inspections. They think we hate require too many inspections. But is there a set number of inspections you're requiring? Maybe you um, can point this out to us. Yeah, the, it's in the uh, in the permit. It's pretty normal. Uh, a setup to make sure everybody's on the same page. And what I propose is a setup. When they mobilize, I show up on site. Just say they point, I point, everybody points, and we're all happy. I write a report. We have a torrential downpour. I show up, and it's it's either three or four inspections at the end of the project because they say they're done. I go and inspect. Yeah, I agree, they're done, or they're not done. And mm -hmm. each inspection is about four hundred dollars because it takes an hour, hour and a half, and then it takes an hour, hour and a half to write a report. Um, so my last proposal actually breaks it down pretty clearly. Right, which is the. The one hundred and thirty five all one? The thirty three, those are invoices. This is the possible one going up to thirty five. Page seven, right? Yeah. It's three uh, site visits are expected, he says, at a cost of four twenty per visit. It's page seven to ten. Mm -hmm. I have seventeen. B. Limited clearing, barrier location, erosion controls. Regular constructions as determined by the board, especially after intense rainfall or weather conditions. And if you're gonna be there in the winter and we and it's not frozen ground, then I'm gonna drive by and see what's going on. Any inspecting a certificate of completion and a release of bond. So it's not overly burdensome. The faster you go, the lesser number of inspections I do. We've had a history of really well-meaning contractors, uh, but the weather has been rather brutal sometimes, and we've had some spectacular blow-ups uh, where we filled an endangered species habitat with two feet of sand to, to the tune of half an acre. So we're a little, little aware of all these kind of things. Uh, again, I can understand and appreciate that for ongoing excavations and construction projects, but we're doing a reclamation and restoration. So I think, I believe there will be some contouring and some, probably some slope adjustments. I have to give it a site. Oh, no, no, he's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But it, it seemed a bit rich to me. Given that we, we normally operate in the absence of site inspection for the local jurisdiction. Yeah. That's not a farm. This isn't a farm. Back when we were in operation, we had one major, major rainfall. Probably, I would almost call it a hundred years fall. Uh, the water never left the property. The retention ponds felt everything a hundred percent the way it was supposed to. So unless we have another hundred years fall, I don't expect any problems on the whole site. Mm -hmm. Because we control all our water. All our water stays on our property yeah. through our retention ponds and then into a swamp. So, we, we, we read some some, um, some of the reports stated that same thing, but it's good to hear it from you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. This says, we, it, it, um, site visits, three site visits, And reports. There is a requirement for reports to us. It's in the bylaw, actually. <coughs> um, and we don't. We didn't write the bylaw. We're just trying to comply with it. Um, we can try to do the best we can. We have returned money to people that have been set forward that wasn't all used. So, to the extent you can consolidate the visits and consolidate the work, it won't be used. Um, but we can't release a bond without a plan inspection. And so forth. So, Bill, I, I didn't catch your last comment. You, you made something about in response to my last comment, but I didn't quite catch it. 
<laughs> I, I know, I'm, I'm doing too many things. He, he was making right. the difference between a gravel, oh, a gravel removal bed. and fill. It's different. I don't know. You know, you guys, are, if, if you have an acre, more than an acre of land open, you have to file for a National Pollutant Discharge Elimination Permit from the feds. That's federal law. And it requires inspections. And it's entirely up to the board if they want to reduce the number of inspections. When I do the kickoff meeting, I invite the fire chief, I invite the police chief. We make sure everybody is on DPW, whether they show up or not. We make sure everybody's on the same page. We make sure all the communication lines have been clearly established and all the pre-construction requirements have been met. Uh, we have yet to have a project that has met all the pre-construction requirements prior to the date of construction because there are a few things in here and I mean, one of them didn't file their order of conditions, another one started work without notifying the town at all. I mean, it just is every single large-scale project that's been going on in this town, we have a history of, so we've learned from it. Likewise with the bond, there's quite a lot of verbiage about the bond because it's a big deal about the bond. Releasing mm -hmm. the bond is burdensome for this board and it's not an easy thing to do. And if the property sells before the project is done, then trans know, transferring the bond. Know, we, you cannot believe the trouble we've had with properties <laughs> yeah. that have sold. That so that, sold that's where the genesis of all this comes from. Yeah. And I appreciate it. It's not my call to make. I'm making a recommendation via this draft to the board. Um, the fa as I said, the faster you guys go, the lesser number of inspections I would obviously do. So could, could, could I ask, I mean, we have, there's a section 17B is really the place where the inspections are delineated, right? On, Correct. on page seven. So I see item number one under section 17B1, that's one inspection, correct? Correct. And then uh, item three is another inspection for all intents and purposes. Three is two. Two inspections, two separate inspections? Two separate Okay, inspections. so that's, those are two. Because you don't release the bond. It's like buying a house, you know, you, you do an inspection, okay, I'll buy your house. Now I'm buying the house just before I move in, I make sure it's okay. And number two, which we skipped over, can be one or more depending obviously on the circumstances, right? Right, yeah. And the circumstances are really guided uh, by weather conditions primarily. Mother nature. Mother Nature, and that's not necessarily in our control, it's not in their control, it's in Mother Nature's control, right? Correct. As long as it's outside of the October 31st to the April timeline. So number two also accommodates a re an inspection requested by the board, so if you get a complaint. Exactly. All right. So I, I mean, I, I look at number one as something that is, I, I mean, that is a requirement. We all need to make sure that we all look at something and we understand what the rules of the roads are going ahead. Section three, where we are looking at the certificate of completion, the release of the reduction of bonding requirements, those are must-haves. Mm -hmm. Correct. What is in between is not really up to us except for the complaints from Mother Nature, correct? Yeah, and that's... Yeah, it's outside the control of the board. I'm just saying is, is I don't think that there's a lot of leeway here to make any kind of changes here. And I hope that you understand that for the way I'm looking at this here is, is that number one, as well as number three, are steady. They're fixed. I can, I can understand it. All I'm saying is it's a departure from our customary operation. I understand it's a part, it is a departure, but it is, good, it is good protocol towards the citizens of the town. And this is also required in that new bylaw? The inspections are required in yep. the courts, yeah. So. And the release and the certificate, it's all. I mean, we can get rid of number one, but that's the lines of communication and make sure everybody's on the exact same page. And I think and that is that's kind of short-sighted. Exactly, that's elementary for a good, for a good process. Right. Okay. And of course, complaints are hopefully totally within Casello's control. Correct. Um, whether none of us have any, any control of, uh, you know, if, I'm more than willing to make make a phone call. Okay, we got a torrential downpour. How the site do? And then send me some pictures. And not do an inspection, but you know, I'm still going to incur an hour of time and community. I'm going to send your pictures on to the board with a recommendation. You know, so there is time in there. 
but I don't think that we should be putting anything here in terms of the frequency of the inspections need to be changed. I mean, I think that you, you've outlined very succinctly what the inspections need to take place. How does inspections have to take place? You, as an expert, I believe, have that, ha has that discretion. Uh, discretion, uh, exactly, the discretion of how you want to do that, and therefore the, the costs that are therefore incurred by Casella as a result of that. Okay? So if we're ready to end the, the fee discussion, yep. I don't think it requires a vote. No. I do think it requires an understanding that the work that's been done needs to be paid and yep. an account needs to be set up for yep. which the inspection fee can be paid. Okay. Okay. So um, do we need a motion to make the changes official? Well, uh, I think there's still some changes here that I think we'd like to. Yeah. I, I have some questions, so. Okay. We really haven't given, we've been sort of responding to. Right, the, right. So the two experts, so any, I want to open up questions from the board unless Bill has anything additional. Well, I was going to suggest a, a change to the uh, number 21, but do you want to continue the discussion and then we'll go over detailed changes? Because as you can see, I can't do two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> So what no, are you? Okay. Is, is, I mean, if, what if, is the change to 21? Exactly. So oh, okay, go ahead. That was that's a continue. Wait, and then we'll take Francois's next question. Go so ahead. really, uh, do you guys have a suggestion for the change in the wording of 21? Um, what we'll add to the last, add to the paragraph. This does not preclude site preparation between these dates, between the prohibited dates, but then you're going to potentially import materials to do site preparation. So we could change the first sentence, no trucking or importation of organic paper fiber materials, or however you want, short paper fibers. SPF. Yes. Yeah. And then you don't need the last, well, you still put the last sentence in too. It would be good if it didn't preclude stump grinding, right? in case we want to use those to construct it. That's why I, I don't want to use the word organic materials, yeah. Why don't you no, just, we're big fans of stump grindings. It works really well. Why don't you just uh, exclude the, the paper fiber specifically, and allow all that, other... That's what I'm saying, okay. yeah. So no trucking or importation of short paper fibers into the site shall take place after October 31st or before April 30th of any year. And then the intent being to, uh, I'll read it completely, the intent is to avoid trucks attempting to enter the site driveway, which is very steep, and not being able to safely maneuver into the site or down and out of the site. Do we still need that time? Um, if you're going to allow them to bring gravel and stuff in, yeah, do I, we really need that? No, I think we should take it out. The intent. If you're using stump grindings, are they from trees on the property already? No. Or no. you would be importing them, okay. Okay, so 21 will read, no trucking or importation of short paper fiber materials into the site shall take place after October 31st or before April 30th of any year. This does not preclude site preparation between these dates. Short and sweet. Okay. Go ahead. Can we just review 16 again? Uh, the stormwater pollution prevention plan. Um, not familiar with one of those. Okay, you're not an agricultural use here. You're a restoration, mm -hmm. which makes you, um, under federal law, you were you are required to file an NPDES. On a, you're actually required to have a SWIP, which is a Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. So an NPDES is the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. And that is an online filing that either the contractor or the owner does with the US EPA. Is it Army Corps or is it EPA? EPA. Um, and then in order to do that filing, you have to have a document, which is a Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, SWIP. SW triple P. And what that is is simply a lot of verbiage to say, if I get a lot of rain, this is what I'm going to do. And if when I do that and it overwhelms the erosion controls, this is what I'm going to do. And it also requires that a competent person, sort of like the trench laws, 
a competent person has to, on a regular basis, inspect the erosion controls in the perimeter of the site and document that damage has not occurred from a half inch rain or more, half inch in 24 hours. It's not us. This is, this is a federal requirement. Uh, I don't know that it applies to farms, but it applies to everything but a farm. This site has the storm water retention built into it, so right. maybe we can get some of that information from previous uh, gravel removal permits. <laughs> I can send you a sample script and, uh, in Word in Word file. And SWCA can do this. I'm just trying to. Oh, SWCA. Uh, SWCA have... is working on one of our solar fields in town. Okay. They can do this in their sleep. I, I I just I'm trying to still add up the costs and where I'm going because just. I understand. Um, it's a new one on us for this because like 90% of our work is on agriculture. Right. So um, I've never been asked. Is there an expensive filing fee with it? No fee. No fee. Okay. But you got, uh, for all intents and purposes, it has to be done by an engineer or an expert in erosion control. Mm -hmm. so can you send them the link and we, the information? We're, we're familiar with the process. Okay. We have people to do it. Good. We have a Plans. There you go. Okay. Are we ready to take questions from the board? I'm okay. Ready. Francois. It's not a question. It's, well, I, I do have one question. I have a couple of quick items. Um, uh, on the, in the findings section, section on page three, quick question. Finding 7.3. Everywhere it does reference uh, this as being. Worcester Road, yet we are Oops. indicating here as frontage is on Gardner Road. Yep, that's right. Okay. Okay. So okay. The yeah. northern Seven part of the road is Gardner Road. Right. I know, but that's, that part is Worcester Road, right? Yeah. What page right. am I? Three? It's all, it's all Worcester Road. Yeah. Yeah. That whole road is Worcester Road. No, Gardner Road is not even near there. Mm -hmm. Good that. catch. Okay. I missed that one. I missed that one. Typos. Uh, quickly, Inevitable. section five, member Francois, F R A N C O I S. Hold on, where Twice. are you? Uh, page two, two. Okay. page two of ten. You made him Francis C and he's C Francis. C O I S. <laughs> I mean, -I, -S. It, I, I don't care, but I know that legally it's not my name. I have no L in my name, otherwise it's right. There's like three of them. Yeah, I got One it. right below. Yeah, that's an easy search on the place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and I'm assuming you turn line. Is it right? Uh, no. Oh. Double L. Oh, you guys are killing me. <laughs> Page five. Yeah. Very top, earth remover per, per middle. I got that already. You got that already? Yeah. All right, I think that's all I could find. <laughs> all right, I need to. Uh... Oh, and then we did say, and I think we, unless the board disagrees, that the word a modification on top of page nine yeah. first sentence will actually say any modification of the source. Uh, yeah, you, right. you, you, you made that change. I did, right? Section Let me fix uh, Bill's name on here. Well, yeah. Then, Never had it spelled that way before. <laughs> Who else? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And then you did indicate that on uh, item 39, you're taking the editor's note out, right? That's what I have. We, we can all stop back and sign this if we were to get that oh, yeah. point. If this is just too too much for credit. Right, over. right. But we'll on the see. first page, Casella is spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you. That's good. I want to see it come back. Catch. Okay. <laughs> that extra. Don't you love spot um, Comments from John or Bill? Yep. Well, all the other one, I'm fine with those. Mm -hmm. Are there um, comments from any of the petitioner crowd out there? That... Anybody else? Yep. Okay. Um, do we need a motion for this? We, if we're, yeah. if we're yes, because it has to be approved. Ready, ready to go. We would have, I think, I have done a little bit of. Take a motion to sign this. It would be. Take a motion 
to accept. Okay. The motion can, uh, to accept to accept the decision as with the corrections and amendments. I make that motion. I second. It's been second. On the decision. Yes. Okay. No, it was first. No, he, he was first. He was second. I made the first. motion. Of what you said. Okay. Any further discussion? C O I S. C O I S. Did you catch that? I did. You did. Okay, so all in favor of approving the decision signify say aye. As amended. Aye. As amended, As amended. say aye. All right. And then a permit and then a second vote to issue the permit having accepted the decision. I think it's didn't we already vote? To you voted to approve the permit last time, so permit. that's fine. This is just the administrative action to approve the decision as corrected. And once I prove, once I, it gets printed out, which we might be able to do tonight, you guys can sign it, and then it's, I will submit it to the town clerk, and then make sure everyone's copied. Okay. And you're going to follow up on, on the financial matters in here. Well, that'll be part bill, because we'll be doing the first site inspection to make sure everything's done for construction, and that's it. That's okay. the item in here that the financial matters have to be taken care of before. Okay. And All I right. Guess, uh, Do we? We could move on to our to welcome our guest here, Kristen Boban. Boban. Yes, Boban. Boban. And here, Thanks, it's an action. It's an item that isn't going to require action. While well, you guys work on completing this, yep. But um, but also we. Okay. Uh, if it's you feel too pressured, you know we can all stop by tomorrow. It's up to you. But we are gathered here, so. Do you have access to the agenda attachment? You can't find the agenda. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, here it is. You got it. You got it, Bill. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank table. you. Okay, yeah, we can't see you actually, so come up to the table, to the table and table? have a seat. So, oh, yeah. oh, so right this here. is uh, smaller you group. Down at the end just because oh, so the camera can see you. Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay. Come okay. find me at the end. Okay, guys. Because my chair is talking a crack or something. Put my water in the way. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Can you capture her on the video there? You got her. Okay. Oh, you're on TV. All I'm right, guys. Here. So, okay. so, um, so step one in all of this is we. Uh, I need to find a host town. I'm not a member of your community. I'm from Barnstable. And Can you state your name, please? Kristen. My name is Kristen Bonvan. Thank you. Hi. Um, so it's easier to ask for. Uh, forgiveness than approval, but I guess we're, we're going to follow the laws here. So the first thing I need is, as I'm on the hunt for a, a host town, we would love, my husband and I, just us, we're not a big business, uh, we want to become legally licensed to grow medical marijuana to supply to the existing dispensaries um, just for cultivation only. This would open up um, a few jobs as far as shuttle drivers go. Um, but what's, uh, California started this with WAM. It's the Women and Men's Alliance for Medical Marijuana. And they started off as a donation process before it was legal to sell. And we kind of really want to mirror something like that where we can help out the town. Um, there's a property for sale right now. We want to live on the property. We have a family. Um, there's a property for sale, and if zoning and everything goes well, um, that's the that's the dream. So um, that's all I have to say about that. Okay. You know, she sent us a very nice letter from the packet. Yes. Yep. Uh, and this property is located on I want to say Hale Road. Is yes. that right? Ninety four. Mm -hmm. Hale Road. Um, well, it's called the Hubbardston Homestead. Oh, okay. I know it's not a farm finder. I'm trying to think which property it is. I can't well, picture it myself, but we um, should you do this, you would be our first farm in town because it's a relatively new bylaw that was passed, um, and we do have rules that that break down. I guess you saw the site. And how it's zoned, that area is zoned residential agriculture. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So you couldn't have a shop there, but you could grow there in yes. theory. No, yeah, no shop. And then if you're going over oh, under 5,000 square feet, which I'm sure you would be, it would require a special permit mm -hmm. from the board. Okay. And then we really can't do anything until you have um, sort of gotten clearance from the State Cannabis Control Commission under 94G, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, 935 CMR, right? Right, and the right has regulations that go with it. Yep. Right, and I don't, I don't know that process. We haven't really gone through it, and we're not responsible for it. Um, but maybe you're familiar with it, or at least read about it. Well, so I thought this was the first step because it's your town. You know, I could get them to come out and pay the fee for them to look at the site, but if the town's not in on it, uh, well, we can't grant you. A, the problem is we can't grant you a special permit. Which you would need, unless I mean, it's kind of a chicken egg. Right. right. Um, we do have the bylaws that would allow you to do it, mm -hmm. but it requires right. a special permit. Mm -hmm. You can't get the special permit until you go through the state process. Yeah. Right. And we really don't have. You generally would not uh, hold a public hearing mm -hmm. until you filed the special permit, because it would be otherwise it's all theory. Right. Otherwise right. it's all theory. So, um, and of course, until we hear the details, we can't really say we would support it or not support it. Correct. But we can yeah. say uh, it has a lot, was a little of the town, passed fairly substantially. Uh, we're a very farm friendly community. Um, and, you know, somebody's got to be first. Why not? If I, but I really don't know what the state requires. I really don't know. Do you know what the requirements by the state are? No. Well, I think they. I think it goes by case by case. Well, they gotta come and look at it, yeah. Which whereabouts is farm located on the other one? I'm not sure. Have you gone and looked at it? No, no. Oh, okay. yeah, so we we saw it online. So we this was really literally my first step. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That's good to come in. Um we appreciate your coming. So in. besides a special permit, where where would are Where licenses you start? available for other spots that don't need a special permit? Can, can, I, can I ask a very fundamental question? Is, is, the, is your intention just to grow? Yes. And then supply the growing material, the grow, grown material, but not to dispense it or to, distribute it here in the town of Mass in, in the town of Harperson, right? No. Two right. dispensaries. Okay. I think it's very important to understand whether or not there is going to be a selling component at the retail level or at the medical marijuana level. Just a cultivation license. So you're purely a grower, yes. and you're you're you you want to grow that plus other things, or just the medical marijuana. Just medical marijuana. We would like to keep the farmstead going. That what's growing on the property. We'd love to have a farm stand, but okay. nothing big. The the answer to your question. Is unless you're growing under 5,000 square feet, you do need a permit, a special permit. Correct. So anything over 5,000 square feet does require a special permit. So if you have a plot of land that's less than 4,000, less than 5,000, 4,999 square feet, uh, you you can grow it. You don't uh, need a permit, and, from and you us. don't need a special permit from us. Not yet. But you no. still need to go to the state to get licensed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. But from the town's perspective, my understanding is is my understanding. And we would have to obviously review this here in more mm -hmm. detail. But if it's like less than, yeah. then there's no special permit required. In, now, if in it's zone. In, in, in that zone. Yes. Right. If once you start touching the 5,000 square feet or go over that, that's when you are in a different situation, right? Right. This is what our bylaw says. We look at 22.4. Right about here, 22.4. Yeah. Oh, okay. It tells you all about. So, and by the way, these bylaws are online. Yeah, we'll be one, no, we're going to do tier one if not a micro business. Okay. So. But okay. I just want. Well, tier one would be under 5,000 square feet? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, definitely. Oh, yes, okay. Right. So it's not a very big area. No. no. But maybe it is for marijuana. I don't know. So I think, I think as long as you understand what the town has as its requirements for determining one way or the other as sure. to what becomes a special permit. That should be your guidance. Okay. It would help you a lot. And then you need to know that if you decide that you're going to go over to the 5,000 square feet, or, or 5,000 or over, that at that point in time a special permit will be required. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you will potentially have some other items that we need to look at. Right? Okay. 
So I can tell you, having done grow houses, yes, um, that you you need to start at the Cannabis Control Commission uh, because you need to get registered with them as a potential, and they will give you a pre-approval, which is your pre-approval to come to the town, and then that that's your pre-approval. They don't actually approve you until you are 100% built, ready uh, to grow. And then they do a final inspection, and they and they go through all the dams. Okay. And if it was less than the five thousand square feet, you don't even need a special permit. You just need yeah. the approval. Right. Yeah. But, they, the, but the state has a lot of regulations about securing the site. And, and if it's if you if you're so growing forth, medicinal, yeah. it's a much bigger deal than recreational because medicinal has to meet criteria of uh, purity, right. purity and standards and things of that nature. But it can also be. But they, those are not imposed by the town, those are imposed state. at the state level. And so from a state perspective, you would have additional requirements that we are not in the business of reviewing, imposing, or supervising in any way, shape, or form. Okay? I mean, it's great that you came over here. Oh, well, we appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you have a time to, before it's too dark to go by 94 Hale and look at the, look at the place. I'm trying to think of where they we are. They have an open house this weekend, so we're going to come okay. back. Oh, yeah. okay. It is a very nice town. We have a lot of agriculture. Oh, I know where it is. I know exactly that's, where it is. You know, that's what we're looking for, a yeah. small and we're farming right. town. We're, we're trying to right. keep, keep farms going. So. Yeah. All right. So I hope, this hit, I hope this helps answer the questions Help. that you have. Okay. Come see us again. We hope you so like much. it. Thank welcome guys. to Hubbardsville. Okay, yes, Thank welcome you. to Hubbardsville. Yeah. We try to be yeah. welcoming. We really do. Take care. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to, Christina isn't back. I was going to see, that thing is, um, matters not reasonably anticipated by the chair. Remind me, but we'll wait till Christina comes back. We're supposed <laughs> to be signing some documents for the registry of deeds and so forth, so when we're signing oh, things, that's right. yes. do not run away before we get to Christina's. Uh, but I'm going to skip to old business because there's no reason we can't discuss 91 Williamsville Road. That's right. Which Bill is also um, our advisor on. Correct. Um, while Christine is trying to fix our document. So. Actually, uh, hopefully all she's doing is printing. <laughs> i got to find mine. <laughs> i got to find your letter, but I have it here. I have copies here. I, I think we already got that, right? We, we had it from our last... Five or six. I put it right next to your package. You're looking for the 91 Williamsville Road? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Put it right. Yeah, that's right. I, got, I have my copy here. I'm sorry. Shall we go on with that, or do you want to? We haven't really started. I have two of them. Somebody else needs one. Yeah, I think the decision maker. So are we ready to sign the decision? We can take a break and do that like before we pick up. I did put the. There you go. Do you have that's another copy right? of the next? Yeah. Oh, you got it? Okay. Great. Move on. You'll make sure that the. Well, okay, let, let's give Bill a minute. He can't do two things at once. And <laughs> what about three? Can you do three things at once? Well, come on, Bill. No. It's called juggling. What's that, Bill? Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I just had moved my camera for her. Oh, so you did it. I knew I exactly where that was because I had a bylaw before. So I just want you to, if you want to mark it on yours, I didn't know. Well, I thought I'd give you a heads up since. No, I, I read the bylaw, but when you're my age, you just think it's it'll stick in your brain. It's all here. I read it. I can have a better page so I would remember everything. Okay, right. so the battery's changed, we're back All on. Right. Uh, Christina, while he's checking, yes. do you want to have us sign what else? Is something about the registry, something? Yes, administrative action for one moment. Everybody got a pen? I do not. <laughs> okay. I have one for you there. I don't know, there's one paper we're signing, or are we signing? That's wrong. There's two pages you're signing. I'll be more prepared next time. <laughs> there hey, it's your first meeting, though. Yeah. Okay. Tell us what we're signing on. Two things we need to I'm sign tonight. One is, um, Alice, you and Francois have already signed this to the registry. And I just need your signature uh, to submit to the registry. Nice. Handing that down. John needs to sign it. Dinner quick, sign here, obviously. Another sorry. one? Uh -huh. uh, okay, Today I do a point. Just that August 21st. Last two days. Uh, election appointment. Oh, don't, don't appointment. put that in. I'll fill that in. Okay. Okay. And just, um, you, Bill, and then I'll have to bring it back for Craig to sign. Okay. Bill, second. I have to uh, yeah. disconnect my computer and go again. So, um, and I'll need your flash drive again. Fix that. Thank you. And then the other thing I would like the board to review is um, the accountant is starting to do a new process 
by which every time I pay bills, um, we print out this form so that the board can review what where the board money is going. Oh, good. Um, and you guys can just look it over and sign it. I figured I would let you know. Uh, this is what we just passed around. Um, most of that is relating to the Catisto matter and the monies that went out. Also, it's the uh, 95 Williamsville Road. The final monies for that, your check was issued, uh, and then the other check was sent to um, old, the landscaping place uh, that was paying for the yes. 95 Williamsville Road well. reclamation. Right. So. So, when we just signed, it was only one copy that needed signing. There's only one copy of this. So we did that right. Yes, you guys did okay. that perfectly. Okay. It was faxed over to the registry. You guys, this is your original signature. The last yes. one was faxed to the registry, so they had it on file for the ANR. You just yes. signed. Okay. Um, and then um, this one, once Craig's signature is on it, I will fax it to them, and I will actually send them in the original. Okay. So that, but they'll have it as soon as possible. I'll probably actually fax this one out. And then when I can get Craig in here to sign his name, I'll fax that one out. They already have Craig and Bill's name, though, on file, so it's not as urgent to get that over. Oh, good. Okay, excellent. I'm going to ask a clarification. The uh, Old Village Landscape uh, balance, that was paid back because they had given a original $2,400, and then that was the amount left over after Bill charged us for his time. Thank you. So, so I just wanted just to sign it right there the registry board. of deeds. When we sign, like we sign And that'll just go decisions. into our general mm -hmm. notes. They that have, have records that we are the. I leave the top one for you. The, the, the present planning board members at the time it was signed as a title. Now the board of health, we right? only have okay. the chair to sign. Okay. Yours is the top one. You may have to sign it. I don't know if they're going to do it with the board of health, but I know that, that came. It's okay. the form now we're, I'm filling oh, out good. for all vendors. Yeah. I'm not sure if the board of health will be implementing that as well. Right. But when I talked to the accountant, she said that they're leaving those on the bank. Basically, all it needs is my signature to pay the bills. Right. This is so that the board can review well, that's a good it and review. be aware of it. Yeah, check some balances. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'll keep that in the file for this meeting going forward. And that's what I have, I think, administratively for tonight. And I'll go make another copy real quick. Is this something you could send out to us by email so we can? I could, yeah, after it's signed, or I could do it before the meeting from now on. Um, we're going to think of putting on the agenda items, just an administrative line, yeah. so that anytime there's anything the board is going to have to review, I can just do that, and I'll make sure it's an attachment going forward. It's sort of a new thing. Right, so we can have it on an email. We can actually look at it and really think about it. Yeah. And then if you have any questions, you can right. have them at the meeting. That would be fine. Okay. I mean, these are just checks going out. They're not the balances in the account. Right. No, no, we don't. So I'm going to plan on checking back in in about a half an hour. Okay. That works. It works. Okay. Can go good for that long. You should get. be okay. All right, now. Okay, All right. I'm going to go print this. I need to get my keys. I'm locking them up. Because there's people out in the hallway, I can't leave the doors locked. I see. Right. Do you need Bill? No. If you don't, we'll have him go move on to 91 Williamsville okay. Road. Is that all right with you, everybody? Totally fine. Yep. If you guys do anything, it's being recorded, so I can get the minutes later. We'll try to be <laughs> to be clear and speak up. Okay, so I just was a point of clarification here that your opinion was dated, I think, or your, or your I shouldn't say opinion, whatever you would call it, report, was dated the 6th, yep. and then a and I don't know whether you were copied on it, but we got a letter, um, also dated the 6th, from the new owner. Did you, did you see that? I didn't. I got an email on the 6th from the new owner. An email. Maybe that was it. Uh, a letter by, by an email that did correct at least the fact that he owns it. Yeah. And told us, I don't know what he, I don't remember how he said, but it addressed the issue of who owns the deposit. I'm not right. reading it, but let's see it. I have it right here. If you want to look at it. So I also saw, and probably it was my search engine from email, there a solar report from last year. I saw that. For 2018. So this is what they're supposed to be providing us every year? Well, there's, the, the report is supposed to address the maintenance performed. Yeah, well, he says no major maintenance required. There you go. But uh, that means the equipment. I mean, this is, but there's work required. That's right. So to summarize my letter, um, we always thought that they were in non-compliance, principally because ownership has changed. And while they notified the assessors of the change, they didn't notify the planning board. And um, 
my big concern really was the bond. But having met with them, and of course this project is one of the worst, this is the worst solar project that we've ever had with them. This is the one that they cut a half acre of wetlands. Uh, they went over the stone wall and cut right. 30 and 40 inch oak trees on the neighbor's property, knowingly. Um, and they just didn't do anything right. It's, it, it's been a thorn in the side of the town for a very, very long time, which is why we wanted to revisit it. Uh, the, sh the bottom line is it's been taken over by uh, TGC Hubbardston, and they have met with me on site. I've gone over the drainage basin needs to be cleaned. They still have erosion on the site. Uh, they have some other you know, issues. The berm has not been addressed. Mm -hmm. The berm was made out of slash and debris from the site. It wasn't made into a really good quality berm. Perfect. The trees have been dying on the berm. Um, and the gentleman that lives across from the street is a former planning board member, so he knows the requirements and he has filed a complaint with the planning board saying that they haven't caught up. Having met with their um, Nick Minicky, their project manager, he and I have reviewed the site status. He's assured me that he's getting a landscape crew in there. They're going to fix the ruts in the roads. They're going to add gravel. They working? They're going to add seed uh, so that we can get more stabilization. They're cleaning out the basin. So really, there are only two outstanding items in my mind. And one of them was I needed actual proof that they own the property, number one. And number two, I've had conversations with the town treasurer and, and treasurer's office. If the bond is in somebody else's name, and somebody comes and said, I gave you a bond for X amount of dollars, I'm no longer the owner. The town has an obligation to release the funds to the owner to the to the, the original bond the original bond person and that has been really my biggest concern because the they are were required by the planning board to put up a forty five thousand dollar cash bond which the town puts in an interest in accruing account which hopefully keeps up with inflation at two and two and a half percent and and it has because the bond is now fifty four thousand dollars instead of the original forty five. So the outstanding matter is the berm, and they came with the landscape architect and showed you some pretty pictures. I, I rendered an opinion that I don't think that that should be a very pretty berm. I don't think we should dress it up. I think we should have natural plant materials in there, so when you go by it, you don't see a solar farm. You just see a berm that's landscape like the side of the road regularly. Yeah, it can have plants, it can have rhododendron, it can have things like that, but we don't, I, I don't think, and it's your call, I don't think we should be put, putting in a garage flower display for the spring or whatever that's going to draw your eye to the solar farm. Uh, I think that the, the fence that is the gate needs to be obstructed, screened or something. They need to come up with something that you can't actually see through the fence into the solar field. You can now. Uh, right. So Why can't I, they just make a driveway that turns behind the berm? They could, or no real place to do that, I right? was thinking just put barn board and let it gray out over the front face of the, the fence so it kind of looks just like a farm gate. But there are a whole lot of options. That's why I said, you know, you've hired a landscape architect. You guys can figure it out. And these are just my recommendations to you. And they're waiting for some sort of response to my recommendations. Uh, before they proceed. I think they should give us a plan because this plan was a little inset. First of all, they didn't do it. And second of all, all the plants are wrong. And it should be more detailed. Right. I mean, you're, not gonna, you're never going to grow anything reasonable unless you put soil, a, a berm soil. Well, the other part of that is the, only a very specific type of plant can live on the top of that berm mm -hmm. if it's going to be an evergreen. Because I mean, it gets complete southern exposure, and it gets the wind. So that's a recipe for disaster for a lot of evergreens that are just baking in the sun in the winter. Out. Yeah, dry out exactly. So a cedar would do it. Any of those things, like you see them on the but, side of the roads. But do they not have to rebuild the berm first? Really bring in earth and? I think they do. It's just so, a pile of debris right now, really. Yeah. But they threw a little. It dirt was. On it top was of. the slash. Slash is the. 
the stumps and the grindings of, I mean, if they'd used grindings, that would have worked. Um, stump grindings, but they didn't. They took the branches and everything else, just pushed in and pushed dirt with a bulldozer. Um, so the, the two outstanding items, going backwards yet again, are the bond. And they have shown me, the, uh, I looked at the legal documents that they sent, where they are the inheritors of all the um, assets of Seaboard Solar Hubbardston. I still think that they should change the name on the bond to themselves. Yeah, it can be acquired. So those are really the only two outstanding items I see are uh, the berm and the bond. And the gate. And the planting. The gate, yeah. Oh, I would consider that part of the same. Oh, we should call it three The front three. screening. Yeah, there you I, go. I think <laughs> the privacy screen. Yeah. This, yeah. this is dragged on. This this neighbor across the street has put up with this for a long time. Yes, yes he, has. he has. And I think we ought to require the berm be. They give us cross sections, they give us height, they give us composition, they give us a plan. And we give them a time frame. And it should be done. He, he, said, he said in his letter, oh, he's going to fix everything in 30 days. How many times has he said that? Well, maybe not him, but uh, we, on this we property. Us, no, we got to give him up. So I think we want to tell him that by Octo our October meeting, we want a landscape plan that also show that it specifies the composition of the berm, that shows the shape of it, it specifies the plannings according to your recommendation. Well, it's really uh, that's my recommendation to you. I don't know because they did it, it is on the town on the planning board's website a link to the planting plan that they provided. Yeah, yeah but that's also for, what's here. Yeah. How long. But it's Red Oaks on no, Park Peak. That that was um, this is superseded. This is the one that came. that's the original. That's what they originally proposed. Yeah, that's what I have. Seven, eight years ago. And but, it, but they never did it. They never did it, but they're also, so I want a new plan that shows what they are going to do that's right. With the trees, I agree. In the front of the berm. Yep. Okay. So, be, that would be by October 2nd. October 2nd. If you get, they should be able to get a plan to us by October Absolutely. 2nd. They got six weeks. Yep. So uh, make a motion to require. I'll make that motion. To require them to provide us a detailed plan of the berm and the plannings. You, you said it in a better way, though. I want a detailed plan. Front screening. Mm -hmm. Herb planting and gate. Mm -hmm. and For our October yeah. meeting, or October 2nd meeting. Following the recommendations of the bill is outlined. Yeah. Second? I'll second. I'd like to discuss this here for a second. Sure. I have some concerns in just with regards to the fact that this is a scenic road. I think you brought up some very interesting and very good points, one having to do with the fact that whatever they propose really should not be an eye catcher. It should actually blend in with what we have as a scenic road. I think this is certainly something that we need to instill in them that whatever they come up with has to follow that characteristic. And so we're not telling them what to do, but I think what is very important to note here is, is we have a scenic road in town here it has been grossly disturbed by this uh, outfit. We do not want them to come up with something that is going to not adhere to what this is, which is a scenic road. And so if they're going to be working either with a landscape architect or with some other form of personnel, that they incorporate the notion of the fact that they are basically in a scenic road and it has to basically provide them with a plan back that integrates this so that for all intents and purposes, you don't even know that there's a solar plant there. Right. That's what I would like to. That's what I want to see. So, right. so you so want to add language that it should conform with our scenic road dialogue? Exactly. And I, and I think we're not going to tell them what that is, but I think we all need to understand that this has been, it's, it's been an eyesore. It continues to be an eyesore. We do not want it to continue to be an eyesore. Is there, in fact, a wall there, stone wall, too? A remnant wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it exists in front of the berm. Did they disturb it? I can't prove it because it was pretty pretty rubbly. And I know they disturbed they disturbed the curve when they were building because multiple trucks drove over the curve and they cracked it many, many times. Will we be, be within our... I tried that with DPW and we really didn't get any traction. No, I, I meant to restore the wall, to improve the wall. Yeah, they, we they, our... they, well, I don't have a before picture. Yep. about eight years ago. Um, 
but their landscape architect at his last presentation said that that was part of what they were going to do. The project manager kind of pulled him back from that, but I can pass that message on. I think we should make it part of the plan. And yeah, restoration part of the scenic road. An improvement of the wall right and in well, conformance I mean, with the scenic road bylaw. Because 95 is the lot next door. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, already done precisely. Right. This is where we're going down this year. We did it there. I think we need to establish again. We're trying. We're we're trying to bring them back in conformance with what that scenic road really was all about. So, so if we could make it the wall at least of the standards and quality as 91 the abutter either side sure yep. yeah yeah but make sure that's on the plan and that whatever yeah. vegetation what whatever landscaping it. form it takes it has to conform what uh, what what the typical scenic road around that area looks like yeah, that Again, was my thought yeah and that that i think is important for us to lay out mm -hmm. and the other question i have as long as we're still in the discussion is the berm is supposed to be how high? Was there any? Yeah. <clears throat> eight, really eight feet. And does, well, okay, so if it's eight feet and then it has plantings that grow on top of it and that's behind the trees in the front, so only just trunks, the right. plantings. Mount is Laurel that, was proposed on the top, which will burn. Which is we, perfect because that's, that's natural for that area. It is, except that it's on the top of the berm, and it's and that one will, so will south, not survive south there. facing, right? Yeah, the will, that will not will, survive. Window there. strip it. Yeah. So to your point, that needs to be. They need to be on the other side of the berm. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm wrong. It's spruce trees on top, which is what they put in. They didn't put the red maple, the oak, or the mountain laurel. They only put spruce trees on the top. Yeah. <laughs> and they've died. And they've died. So we're not. They're removing dead trees. Right. I think they may be really ought to, we do have a form for scenic road bylaw, work on the scenic road bylaw strip, and they ought to complete it as part of this and file it. Sounds good to me. Because, I'll take that friendly amendment. Okay. <laughs> so, the amendments are they're going to do the burn, they're going to do the landscaping, they're going to do the gate, they're going to do the wall reconstruction up to the neighboring one. And they're going to comply with the scenic bylaw. In conformance with the scenic bylaw. In conformance with the scenic bylaw, but also in compliance with In now, compliance, yes. Does that also incorporate the stone wall, too? Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Still have a second. I still have a second. Okay. So the action moving forward, are you sending them a letter or am I sending them a letter? Okay. We can send the letter, right? I mean, I, I'm. Okay. Um, I'm I can still send working. a letter with regards to the motion made today and the requirements. I have no objection to that. Okay. I'm still working for you on it. I haven't even invoiced on this one. So. Yeah, but do we have money to pay you on this? You have money. I'm going to let Bill handle it. Why? So because you're going to be the one supervising it. So if you write it covering all those points. Wouldn't it be better coming from us too, though? What? Which I think we should do a letter also. I do the vote. Do the vote. Let's do the letter. Okay. And then he follows up with his. I just think it's more. All right. I can do the vote, and then Bill could do a letter stating what the requirements are. So the vote was made that, that they need to do this, and Bill follows up with the exact requirements. The only thing is with the scenic group, uh, they need to be made aware that they're going to have to do a public hearing, and there will be checks associated with that. Yes. Okay. Well, they did. Make sure that they're aware of that. They, they did a scenic group when they did the. Original solar farm. That was part of. Oh, their okay. Can we? No, because this is different. This is every time you do work on a scenic road, you have to do a new. It's yeah. not a very big fee. What is no, the fee? Well, it's uh, posting in the Gardner News, which could be up to about one hundred and seventy dollars, and the notification of abutters. Um, so good, isn't she? So. I think the abutters sh should be notified. Yeah, I guess so. they've had quite the history with this. Yeah, project. well, and that's not the reason why I'd like to see it go forward from a letter from us. Okay. And then also from Bill, because this has been going on for a long time. I've only been on this board a year, and this has been nothing but a problem. And I don't think we should go lightly on this. I think we should be forceful and push it along, and let's get it done. Okay. Yeah. Set, 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 set the example. Okay. But are we looking on the letter I sent? So that you know what I sent. And, and Christine, I'll work with you on it. I'll come in. Um, done. <laughs> I never get anything done. <laughs> okay. I'm um, sorry, I need an all in favor. We have a motion and a second on this. I need a vote, please. Motion on the board. Who was seconded? 
Well, so we're ready to sign this. That's right here. I'll even give you the blue folder back so it's easy to keep track of. Yeah, there's a lot of paper on this table. Yeah. I can read a lot of paper. <laughs> Killing trees. Very last bit. Should we review it first? Well, maybe go old to Irving and come back to Hoverson somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question for you. Uh, you did indicate this is no. I can't read it that fast. Christina, that's it. Yeah, I have shoes. So, all right, here goes. Nothing nowadays. Nowadays, yeah. it's not economical nowadays. But they had the first grant, yeah. so that they were tax free, and they. Yeah. Yeah. And for some reason, I always thought that they were larger than point eighty one. Well, they do yeah. want to build next door. You're lefty. Oh, I know that. That beautiful house has fallen into District 95. They oh, okay. went to the Conservation Commission to clear the back land. But now I guess there's a problem with the, and I don't honestly know what the issue, but I think there's a problem with National Grid. What a shame with that house is sitting there. Like that. That's that's that was beautiful. a beautiful home. And yard. Yeah. We have a beautiful barn in the back there. Francois, you can date that. I think there's a date line I didn't fill in. No. Stated at the top, the date is 21st. Okay. It is 21st. Okay. okay. That's good. As it is an administrative action, I'm not correct in assuming I can get Craig's signature after the fact. You don't even need it. You don't I know I don't need it, but he has a line on there. I should know if, we need to, if I need to put not present or we don't leave any blank lines. You can leave a blank line. Okay. Thank you. So you're going to get that decision out tomorrow? Yes, to the town clerk and I'll send it down um, a to Mr. scan to everyone. Yes, this gentleman who wants to take Mark, it. Mark, did you want to comment to us? Do you want to copy now? I can make a copy of We've it. signed it. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be courteous. Okay. Well, you know that. I know I'll make two. Yep, I'll make two. What else we got? Never know these voices. Oh, jeez. Well, I buried my... We'll back. try to get that letter out right away too. If we have, oh, my question is this: the October first date, um, the October second date, which is our meeting, our October meeting, is 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 our thinking that we want to have the hearing on that plan for the scenic road that published night. at the same time? Because the question to me is. It is getting very late in October to do any planning or earthwork. Right. So we're going to wait all winter then. Right. So do you want to, what do you want to do with this? Do we want to? Let me ask them what they want to do. Well, if they can get it all rolling forward that quickly, we should have a do it that night. Well, you want to tell them what to do, so why don't we just tell them you will file a scenic road application. Then the date, the date has to be before the second because she's got to have publication. Yeah. So give them about a month instead of five, six weeks. It's not hard to make that application, so. Well, no, but it, but you have to have a week to publish it, and right. you've got to submit it Monday to get it in third. I mean, right. So we're the almost to the last week of August here, so that gives us four weeks, one, two, three, four, five weeks. Right. So okay. Is that up? Basically, say. Bill says that they can do it. Right. In okay. It's a week to make the action. Okay. The there is. They, 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 well, with the, with the scenic bylaw, they would submit a plan. It wouldn't have to be the. It could be conceptual and already right. more detailed. Right, right. Okay. There you go. Thank you. I don't have the original, right? Do not. I have the original. <laughs> I have completely lost my Marinelli? agenda. Here. Uh, I'd like to uh, point of order. Yes. Madam Chair, I just want to make you aware. I'm not sure how much time you have left on the battery. We will be at about five minutes from right now. Last time she left the room, she said she'd be back and that the battery might be. Well okay, we could, we don't have anybody, unless Mark wishes to see, say anything more, we don't have any more comments for well, the only public hearing. Well, I have is, I don't think I can put up a stop sign because it's against the law, because they told me 25 years ago, the board told me I had to put a truck center in the left, a truck center in the right on the road, and the state approached me and says, do not put them signs up, because this is a state highway, you have state approval, state permission to put a sign up. Put it on your property. Well, now, okay, the next question is if, if the 
truck rolls through the stop sign, and the cops don't give him a ticket for rolling a stop sign. That's up to the police, I don't know. Because knowing them, they could sit down there and watch every truck leave or whatever, just looking to give him a ticket. I don't think they're going to do that, Mark. I really don't. I, I think in, in, the, in all reality here, it really was, it's there just to show them that here's the end of the road. Okay, somebody's never been on that road before. Safety-wise, I think it's a good thing. I don't think anybody's going to sit down there and write somebody out. Like I said, we had 60,000 trucks leaving. I know. Well, this is a whole new crew, a whole new time. Um, it's a cautionary. It's, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. It's a cautionary component that anybody who's coming down that hill to see that stop sign, it'll be something for them to understand that. Make it up. Make it up out of plywood. That's what it's going to be made out of. Make it up out of plywood, Mark, and take it down as soon as it's done. And that way, it's not a big cost to you. And then it's, and the safety factor is there for, for the guys coming down. Okay. I think we, because we are going to run out of battery life, um, <laughs> should end this with the, after the discussion of 91 Williams Hill Road and pick up from there so on the, the first of September, the first meeting in September. Um, okay, September 4th. So, September 4th. So, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will put a motion that we adjourn. I will second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.